Hello everyone and welcome inside of the Rogers studio for another episode of Night's Talk. I'm your host Matt Sanderson and in studio with me we have Brian Joyle and Francis Moore that we're going to be talking to in just a little bit. And for the, the, me, the Knights of Meaford, it's actually been uh, a pretty good start to 2019. They ended up heading into 2019 on a nice little roll. They're currently sitting one point out of fourth place behind the Almaguin Spartans. Um, they are 16, 13, 0 and 2 on the season right now. And you see there that, uh, extra overtime loss came the other night against, um, the South Muskoka shield in overtime. We'll talk about that in just a little bit, but for this me for Knights team, it's a very young squad, but you guys, you know, you're, you're really putting things together and it seems like uh, things are, are starting to gel at the right time for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say that uh, with this team, we got off to a pretty slow start and we were just trying to learn how to play with everyone and getting to know each other. But as things got rolling, we ended up coming together as a team and we've made some moves here. So now it's just all about, you know, finishing the job and hopefully making a good run in playoffs. The one thing I, I'm very surprised about, Brian, is the amount of talent on this squad, despite the fact that everybody's in their first year. You look at, at uh, Eli Kinsman, you have also uh, Tyson Goodaitis. I think I'm saying that last name right. Yeah. Um, and uh, just uh, among the, the talent, Francis, yourself, bef before you were sidelined, mm -hmm. you had 19 points on the mm -hmm. season. So the talent is all just through and through. Yeah, yeah, we have a uh, we have pretty good team. Uh, like like Francis says, uh, we have like not the start of the season we want, but I think we have the team to to do a lot of like a playoff game, and then we can we can surprise some teams. Absolutely, and I think early on in the season when you guys took down Ville Marie at the St. Vincent Community Center, that was definitely a feather in the cap, yeah. a lot of help along the way for you. Brian, you come into this year, you got through 21 games, you got six assists right now. You're still looking for that first goal, but nonetheless, how how do you think? What do you think of your play so far this year? Uh, I think I have a pretty good start of the season, and then I I had like uh, injury in my hand, and then since since that I I can put some points, but uh, during Christmas I think about that, and I'm just gonna play the game that I just will come back to the game that I play, and just just think about little thing, and then it it's just gonna go, it's just gonna happen like with time, and I know I I can I can be good, I know how I play, I just need to play like how I am and then it's going to be all right. Absolutely. And Francis, like I was mentioning, the fact that 19 points on the season and then unfortunately you went down. Uh, I was hearing you talk to our producer. I uh, believe it's a meniscus uh, there that you uh, ended up doing some damage to. Um, it must be hard for you being on the sidelines watching this club, but how do you think that this progression is going for you? Um, I mean, yeah, it's hard to sit back and watch your team and not being able to really go out there and help them out. But um, I think that just keeping a good attitude about it and staying optimistic is the best thing that I can do. I mean, I've been battling um, injuries all season. I messed my shoulder up, the popped my shoulder out the first game of the year. So it's just been a battle. But, you know, just keep working. Like, I'm already on a bike in three weeks. So... Hopefully I'll be back for playoffs. And despite all that, you actually have some exciting news uh, and congratulations on this. Tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, yeah, so I just made a commitment to Robert Morris, which is pretty exciting for me and my family because at the beginning of the year, I really didn't know, you know, how's it going to turn out. And uh, luckily I was able to produce and get my name out there and make that happen. So I right, get so to continue my education and play four more years of school hockey. So good and after that you never know what happens so yeah. uh congratulations once again and that's a, a big thing for you if you're not entirely sure robert morris university in the windy city of chicago mm -hmm. so uh he's going to be not only around a lot of talent but a lot of historic sports 
all around you. So that should be a lot of fun there for yourself. Uh, let's take a look at the highlights of uh, last Thursday night's game. It was a, a real tough one, um, but these guys came out of it at the end of the, the game with their heads held high. Guys in their lineup. Seems like those guys are there tonight. And it's, that one squeezes through and they score. And Ralph Gorvax moves through the middle. Look at him with some nifty move. They go in. Fox they score. To They're gonna An almost costly turnover. You don't want to pick, put it on that kid's stick too often because he knows where to find the twine. And uh, he's a good goal scorer. Kinsman and does the same thing. Turns it over and they score. Eli Kinsman with the turnover and capitalizing is David Kovar. And uh, just weren't rewarded. They made one really bad mistake in their zone and, uh, and it ended up going in the net. Good chance there. And they fire it home the third goal that goes between the legs of Alan Maneri. And then the, p the power play woes. Something that they still gotta work through. Kinsman to Long. Long fires and scores! What, what a, a shot! What a Samuel Fritzvalski. A great play by Eli Kinsman! And we're all tied up! He gets that to McCon. 10 seconds left in the overtime. Saar has that one deflected, but it's up and out of play over top of everything. And McCon, one last chance. He scores! Oh my goodness! McCann scores and absolutely stunned. So, probably not the way that you guys wanted that one to end, and it's definitely a tough one, especially with literally seconds left on the clock and that one goes in but as i was mentioning to you guys if you play that that scenario over again and again yeah. you'd be lucky if that happens one in a hundred times it was just unfortunate but as you said francis it, it, that's all part of hockey yeah that's just that's sometimes that's how the puck bounces and like everything happens in a split second it can change the whole outcome of a game so yeah it's hockey for you Brian, you have to be uh, happy with the comeback of your team. Despite the loss, you're down 3-1, yeah. and then that big top line, Eli Kinsman, Tyson, Gaditis, they get going, yeah. and next thing you know, you're all tied up in this game. Yeah, yeah, they do, like, they do pretty good, but each time we play against this team, we, like, it's always, like, great game. Like, you know, like, when, like, fans come watch, they know that's going to be a good game because, like, we uh, we have pretty much the same team and then we're just trying to like do a battle and but yeah we we bounce back then we just need to like do a little bit more and then we're gonna win against them and that was actually a pretty good night for you guys on the power play as well francis it started off pretty slow for you guys on the mm -hmm. power play but talking to head coach nathan Parrish last week on night's talk mentioned the fact of you ended up getting a a handful of of goals in a, in a game just before the Christmas break there and you know things are now clicking for you guys on that power play yeah yeah it's uh it's unfortunate um that you know I can't like I said I can't go out there and help them but um I think that the power play that they've established now is definitely going to be working for them pretty well it's fun to see them play they know how to move the puck fast and so that's what you need on a power play to, to get opportunities all right, so let's take a look at the upcoming games for the Knights of Meaford. And you see that uh, tomorrow night they're in Bradford taking on the Bulls and then back home on Thursday night, this coming Thursday at the St. Vincent Community Center, taking on the Bulls again. And then Sunday they're in South Muskoka playing the Shield another time. And then next Thursday, January the 24th, will be a really good one. Taking on the top-seeded Bradford Rattlers in the North Division. So that should be an exciting game. And then Sunday, they're home to New Tecumseh. And then Thursday, January 31st, home again to the Bradford Bulls. So after this weekend, you got three home games in a row. Uh, the season's winding down. But what's 
the game plan here, guys, uh, as you, you run towards playoffs? Uh, definitely stay healthy. Just try to keep and maintain the lineup we got right now, if not add to it. Um, just keep trying to recover and, like I said, hopefully get back for playoffs and help the boys out. So, yeah. Yep. I will say, like, that uh, we just need to take all the game, the rest of the game that we had to take as experience and then, like, play with confidence for, like, get ready for playoff. Well, as this being my first year doing these these hockey games for this Meaford team, I got to say there's a lot of very exciting hockey players and uh, exciting hockey in Meaford. And if you haven't had your chance to get out and watch these games, you're not going to be disappointed, especially come playoff time. That St. Vincent Community Center is going to be packed. So make sure to try to catch them. And uh, if you're watching on TV as well, we'll see you Thursday night when the Knights of Meaford, excuse me, take on the Bradford Bulls. So that does it for this edition of Knights Talk. We'll be back next week with more special guests. In the meantime, we'll see you around the rink on Rogers TV.